Good evening or afternoon, should I say, and welcome to Show Studio. Welcome to Show Studio's live panel discussions. In these discussions, we speak to experts, and we say, and we mean experts today, from all parts of the industry, discussing and debating the most important Fashion Week shows of the season. And today, to end Milan Fashion Week, we're going to be discussing and destroying, well, I am, GCDS. God cannot destroy streetwear, but we can. I don't know if anyone of you saw this show, but you'll, you'll understand why. So today we're joined by two other panellists. We were meant to be three. Karen stuck in traffic in the middle of a pandemic. In lockdown, she's found traffic. Very Karen Bins. Okay, first of all, Nicole, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, my name is Nicole Zisman. Um, I'm a fashion and digital designer and I'm based here in London. My interests lie very broadly in addressing the complexity of Jewish identity in the West. I work mostly through print and image. I worked with Center for Sustainable Fashion. I'm currently holding a post as a digital researcher at Goldsmiths University. My current fashion work is heavily focused on material behavior and achieving full circularity in a product. And my digital work has actually very recently started to focus on achieving internet equalities. And we've run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> and our second panelist today is <laughs> Vincenzo. Would you like to tell us it? Yeah, I'm way, I'm way less impressive. Um, yeah, my name is Vincenzo. <laughs> I um, I do a bit of everything, as I was saying to Tony before. I'm one of those horrible London people who does uh, DJing and influencing and all those sorts of things. Um, but currently, I do a lot of personal and creative styling and creative consultancy. Uh, I work sort of like on the retail side with uh, bigger companies like Farfetch. And then I also do, uh, I'm currently the digital, um, the director of digital marketing, uh, a small up and coming brand called Namacheco as well. So um, dibble, little, little, little drips and drabs everywhere. Not as professional as Nicole, unfortunately. I can't pinpoint exactly what I do yet because I don't do too much, but, you know, we'll get there. That's the best kind of creative, though. <laughs> well, hopefully. In case of spinning the bottle, right? And wherever yeah. it points to, you do that today, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Amazing. Okay, so we're here to discuss GCDS. God cannot destroy streetwear. Kind of like, you know, there you go. It has it in the name. Uh, for me, I watched the show, and I'm going to be totally honest. I turned it off after 30 seconds. The, first, <laughs> the beginning of it, for me was just pure noise they, you know they did a, a collaboration with a sweet brand and all it was was like noise and it, it was it started off like a, a, a Kanye video mm. uh, which I thought it was going to be like you know like rappers in a shop and then it kind of went into the worst k-hole I've ever been in and I went back to it obviously because I was doing this panel and uh, it you know I'm glad I did go back to it I'm glad I watched it because, and I got beyond the, the soundtrack. I'm, you know, you guys watching today, when we show clips from it, for copyright reasons, we're not allowed to play the soundtrack, which is a blessing. <laughs> Trust me. If you want to know what we're on about, go check it out. But uh, let's start off with you, Nicole. What did you think of the show? Um, the overall show, the, the, you know, the presentation. So I... I watched the show and my first thoughts on the show were that I felt nothing, <laughs> which is always a good thing to feel when you watch a show. Yeah. Um, the second time I watched it to try and get something for this, um, I ended up ha basically hating everything that it stands for symbolically, materially. I hate the way it exists um, in the industry, especially post pandemic. Um, I I think that for me, it feels, this brand feels very much um, that one of those brands where cult celebrity kind of vibes are extremely embedded into its success. Um, and I think that this kind of brand um, was very prominent before the pandemic. And actually, despite changing attitudes on, on the concept of celebrity now, I think it's still... Um, it's still something we haven't managed to shake. Um, I think that, yeah, I think, I think that's my overall, my, my feeling on, on the show is that it's, it's kind of, it, it, it's a weird thing to exist now 
after the industry has had so many different um, transformations as a, as a result of, of COVID? Let's go back to a bit about the celebrity. You know, for me, I think that that is very dated in itself, the fact that you still need celebrities in your show to sell your clothes when it's the clothes that should be selling and not the celebration of the fact that you have a celebrity in there. I think it's very post uh, pre-pandemic in thinking, you know, we, 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 can't, we haven't gone through what we've gone through and stayed at home and gone through all of this stuff for nothing to change. And I kind of think with this show, nothing's changed. Do you know what I mean? It still has that, oh, let's, let's throw this at it, let's throw that at it. You know, yeah. and hopefully if we light, light enough little fires, no one's going to really see the bonfire in the middle. And I kind of mean that was what I got, I took from it. I kind of just was like, okay, I wasn't wowed. I wasn't wowed. There was no bit where I was like, oh, she's in it. Oh, he's in it. I was just, it was kind of like, okay, you know, when you, you get home from being out for three days and you're sitting on the sofa zoned out and the MTV's on or, or showing my age there, but you know, like music videos were on TV and you're just sitting there zoned out and it could be absolutely anything. That's how it felt. Um, let's go to you, Vincenzo. What do you, do you think of the overall show? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, even trying to be like objective about this is, 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 I can't be super nice. I think it was the best way to describe it. It was very, very disjointed. And I feel like they were trying to do 80 things at once. And I understand there being a few stories and a few references that run through a whole collection, but there was, and it shows in the video, there's like eight different stories and maybe like four sets around it. And like even practical, easy things like the color schemes and just, it was just a, it was like a throw up of ideas that they wanted to do when they, they, it felt almost like rushed. Um, mm. There wasn't a lot of dedication to it. Um, I, I under, I can go as far as say, I understand what they were trying to do, but the execution was just zero. There was nothing there at all. Um, I don't think they hit the nail on the head of anything that they were trying to do really. Um, I think when we get into it, we'll show them. But I mean, even if I'm trying to be as fair as possible, there's a couple of individual pieces that I think have potential that, that could be great. But I think just speaking about the cre like the creative direction is just, it was just off. I, I had no understanding of what they were trying to produce. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think it was just, it was 10 different things at once that yeah. didn't gel. I think you see that in the clothes as well, I mean, uh, which is a shame, which is a shame. At the beginning, it started off, as I said, it started off like a pop video, which you most of it yeah. the show was. But you thought it was going to be like this rap video. And then it went into all this noise. Uh, and, you know, that was the bit that I tuned out on straight away. I was like, okay. And then to go on and think, okay, it's going to get better. And it progressively didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, there were bits of it that I thought, okay, I like that. There were bits of it that I kind of thought, this is kind of like, I've worn all of this at some point in my life, whether it be at a chill out, trying to entertain the masses, or just be like in general, just out and about. I kind of just, it just didn't flow. It was so disjointed. Yeah. And there were some really nice bits in it, you know. There was some, you know. But if, as you say, some very, those very nice bits didn't belong with the very bad bits. Yeah. You know what I mean? It kind of was like, it was like a really bad roller coaster. So let's talk about looks. Okay. For you, what did you, uh, Nicole, what did you think were the standout moments for the women, uh, women's wear in the show? I, so for me, the only thing I, so after the, the film started and I kind of, um, you know, after he goes into his whole, you know, K-hole, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I um, what the one thing I actually did appreciate was that you could see the clothes. But at the same time, there was nothing, there, there's really a few things in there that I'd actually wear because this this is actually a streetwear brand. So in a way, um, it's important to kind of look at it as, as clothes that people are going to wear out. The only thing I'd actually really wear are the bras, <laughs> the hard and the diamante ones. Um, I'd wear them out. Can we look at those, please? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so the, those are the really the only things I'd wear. Um, I did also like the slinky Lorex dresses in the end. Um, the thing is as well, actually for me, streetwear has never really been my bag. 
Um, but I definitely appreciate and love somebody like Johnny Banger, sports banger, who does it in a very tongue in cheek, satirical way. And has actually really contributed to the huge moment that lagging as an aesthetic is having at the minute. And I don't really get that from Giuliano Calza and I never really have. Mm. Um, and maybe I'm reading him and his brand completely wrong, but there, this really the standout moment for me is that <laughs> this collection for me doesn't really line up with with the zeitgeist, which is sort of off of what we were talking about before. Um, and I think maybe it's the intense visual referencing of influ influencer fast fashion and not in a critical or responsive way. It's seemingly done in a very aspirational way. Yeah. I think that with the, the looks, the individual looks that we're looking at now, they, they were put together really well because they were styled greatly. Yeah. But they, they, but they, they just... There, there was no, there was no, there was no story to it in the sense yeah. of, okay, this is a collection. It, for in order to be a collection, it, it's like a, you know, there kind of needs to be a link between it all, and it was kind of just like, you know, fifty yeah. million things going on at once. It was like someone had like, you know, when you were a kid and you uh, you take the top forty on your cassette player and you didn't want the DJ speaking, so you would press play and the stop, press play, and press stop. So you would get bits of songs and then you play it back. And yeah. that's, that's what this was like for me. It was like bits, bits of this and bits of that. And it was kind of like, okay, it's like a club montage what you would watch on a monitor in a nightclub. Yeah. Uh, what did you think for you? Was your standout bits in the show, Vincenzo? Um, well, I mean, I also wanted to jump on the points you guys made. I think it's excellently put. I mean, also, let's talk about the fact that it's called um, Gods Can't Destroy Streetwear, and it's most of its <laughs> most of its tailoring. Like, first of all, is not is not the majority of it tailoring. Um, I the the pieces that I liked were um, I think it was sort of like if you go down uh, Christina to sort of like there's a uh, purpley pink row. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, I like those as standalone pieces. I think, you know, that the knit on uh, look, uh, is that look 18? Yeah. I think that's really nice on its own. Um, they're not like anything special, as you said. I think Tony, you said it right, which is that like when you're watching this, there's nothing where you're like, wow. Uh, and again, to touch on the celebrities point, I actually think that some celebrities in some campaigns used in tongue in cheek or they might genuinely perfectly fit the aesthetic and you, you can use them and then you can go, oh, hey, cool. There's that person and that works well. I mean, there's celebrities and non-celebrities in this. None of them work. Um, the casting is, it's a little off for me. I mean, like the casting is one that has like sort of more of a wider variety in taste. So casting is a, is a little less um, of, a, of an accuracy sort of business. But um, I, I really like those pink pieces. But the rest, it's just so difficult. I mean, I also feel like, especially the menswear, the tailoring, there's so many things that are way too close to the brands here. I mean, like Ruben's look and look 13 there. I mean, that's just like Jacquemus through and through. Do you know what I mean? All of that wider tailoring, all the buckling that you see, whether you like it or not, is all leaks. It's it's just copying, you know, like, and the cartoons, there's a cartoon on the back of the green sparkly yeah. coat and it's been done, yeah. it's been done. Oh, it's like, it, they've, they've, they've almost like gone back two years, looked at some of the most lackluster stuff that people have done and gone great this is our collection now and it's just yeah i, I find it a, a very difficult I, mean, I, I find it difficult to compliment on a whole i think we can look at individual pieces and I mean, go, this like, is wearable I, but I, I like you i like the i like the purples and i like the colors the color ways of it but mm. it was it just was the orchestration the way you know that this stuff i loved I love bit, single pieces of it. There wasn't mm -hmm. one bit, one whole continual outfit. That I thought that looks incredible. Yeah, you know I agree. I mean? Yeah, oversized jackets, all of that. How many more times do we have to see that? Yeah. You know, this, I mean, you know, great. Five years ago. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, for me, you know, I wore that in the 80s and 90s and, you know, in the 2000s, it, it comes around. Every time it comes around, it's, it's, it, it has a new fresh feel on it. Well, you have to wait for it to come back round. Don't do it after it's just five five percent moved on. Do you know Absolutely. What I, mean? I mean, even if I like, yeah. Circle. If if I mean, say they did take their references from these people, they should have done it like ages ago. Everything just here feels a bit late. It feels just uh, this the moment for all this stuff. Even if it wasn't good, is past. You know, if you it's 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 a shame. I feel like they've taken so many references that are not that weren't even 
something completely unique, original, special in the beginning. And now they've chosen to pick those two years after the point that they were relevant and they weren't that great when they were relevant. So, you know, I kind of like the, the, the at the very end of the show, quite like the very end of the show, actually. But I quite like the, the outfit, the green, the green sparkly outfit at the end of the show. Yeah. You know, when it walked towards it, I, I, well, okay, I quite like this. And then it turned around and it had the stupid cartoon on the back. Yeah, it's got the Looney Tunes on it. And it was, yeah, and it was kind of like, come on, guys, you know, it, it, you know, it's straight back to like, let's take it back to Iceberg. Back in, uh, back in yeah, the day, you go know what I mean? Complete, I absolutely, completely agree. It's very Iceberg. That's another brand that it is. It's, it's, and I mean, like, look at all the small bags. It's just, it's Jack and Mooster in through for a lot of it as well. There's there's so many references that are so obvious and so close to some people, and it's just yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. It's so a shame. As, a, as a DJ, you know, I for me, I do music for shows. I have done for, since I was 16, and you know, for me, music is a, one of the biggest parts of a show. It it, it it has to carry you through. It has to lift you. It has to give you that heartbeat. Of like, oh my god, this is intense. This is amazing. Yeah, that, the music in this show let it down big time. Yeah, you know, if the music was better and it had, I can see where they were trying to do. I think they were trying to be too cool for school on every level. Yeah, and I think maybe forget trying to be cool and just go back to school. Yeah, I can, compl- I completely agree. There was nothing in the music, and uh, that again, that first bit, like you said, that was going to look like it was going into a music video. It, yeah. it was just, it was almost pointless. Uh, the, that 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 the the beginning and ending where they tried to tie it together, it had nothing to do with this like uh, sweets has sent them into this world where clothes look crap. I don't. Well, what was that? <laughs> I don't, what, sugar. It's yeah, all like, about blame it on the sugar. Yeah, I, it, was, it was weird. Like I, yeah, this this first bit I, I don't understand. I mean, were uh, the pills meant? Were the sweets meant to be like pills? Was it? Yeah, that's what I. That's okay, what I kind of felt. But. Um, but um, it was kind of like, was it the sweets were they meant to be a reference to drug? I don't know. Maybe I'm just going back to my drug past into it. But I kind of just found it on oh, Nicole's back good. And uh, I thought we lost you then. Uh, yeah, the referencing was just, yeah, I mean, this, oh, it was so annoying. And uh, yeah, here we go. Look, look, I'm going down the rabbit hole. And yeah, 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 yeah. In Ketamine Land, in Dawson yeah. on Sunday. No, 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 no. So, N- Nicole, out of all of the outfits, which you, which would you say was your favourite? And I know it's a big ask. Um, I think if the pink dress wasn't lined with that exposed zip and Bimini Bon Boulash was wearing it. <laughs> I would... <laughs> yeah, let's bring Bimini in, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, Bimini is not wearing that dress. Um I, I honestly, I, I yeah, like, I liked this. I liked some of the tailoring in theory. It was just, again, it was the wrong material. And it's one of those things where everyone's got a bit of tailoring in their collection. Um, you know, the shapes aren't new shapes. And obviously, you know, especially in a streetwear brand, you're kind of focused on selling. Um, but for me as well, those, the, the things that stuck out about the tailoring were, the seams that were, you could just tell the fabric wasn't meant for it. I guess that silver one was kind of okay. It made me sort of think twice about it. Um, and then actually the the two Lurex dresses in the end, I thought were okay. <laughs> okay. I thought they were <laughs> Let's go back to my, <laughs> the standout piece was definitely the green, like um, there's only one way to call it, like prostitute dress with the, the holes in it. It was like the pre- it was like a Julia Roberts moment in Pretty Woman. It yeah. should have been made of hands up. Yeah, you know, it was a green dress with the, the holes on the side on the bigger the bigger plus side model. Which uh, I must add, there was only one of those in the whole show. If you're gonna do yeah. that, you're gonna do you're gonna do the plus size model. Let's keep them throughout the show. Let's not just show one glimpse, one token. Yeah, that doesn't cut it for me. Look there, that doesn't cut it for me. I think that you know, the bigger plus side model is, I'm afraid to say, is an amazing thing, and it's, you know, and so it should be in every show, and in, you know, it's reality. But I just think in this, it, you know, sometimes it can be the new pulled pork. I completely you know, agree. It really can, you know, in the sense that okay, well, well we need to put that in because we're going to please them and blah blah blah. And you know, the, the show kind of was like, dare I say it? 
trying to be people pleasing, but without absolutely to make someone. No. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think I see a lot of brands and just speaking on the industry in general. I think you know, like inclusivity in the whole is amazing, but all of these are just obvious bids where, I mean, at least it's a objective end where money's the goal and they're not really trying to upset or please anyone at the same time or actually be, you know, inclusive. Yeah. But um, yeah, this feels very token everything. I think it's, Nicole, it's... Nicole hit, it, it hit the nail on the head when she said that that pink dress, if it was on Bimini or someone <laughs> like Bimini, I think that would have been so much more groundbreaking and so much more relevant than, than it not being on there, you know. And I kind of think they, they, you know, they tried too hard for it to be like that. Do you get in the sense that if it was Bimini walking down there or, or any, any other queen of that stature, it would have been amazing. And it, it wouldn't have been tokenism. It would have, been, it, would, it would have felt real. And it doesn't feel real having one plus size girl in there. Yeah. yeah just, having yeah having exactly one of everything isn't reality and it's not it's believable a, it's, it's, a it's, it's, it's a box yeah, of chocolates it, it's so it's so weird it's, it's I, a box I of chocolates for the toffee ones that no one wants yeah <laughs> people, yeah people need to be and look at and the casting of everyone needs to have the same opportunity right everyone yeah. needs to get into the casting and then you need to pick the people that work and, that, I mean, and it's that's fashion. It. This yeah. is where we get, they go wrong. It's fashion. And fashion's for everyone. It's how you wear yeah. it. It's not, that, you know, it's who's wearing it and how they wear it and what they wear it with. And I kind of just think, you know, there was bits in there that I just thought, oh, I, there wasn't anything that I thought, oh, God, I'd like that. That would go with this or that would go with that. There wasn't any of those, oh, my God, I really want to go back and look at that piece again. Mm-hmm. For me, it was like, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. as I said, it was like a, a phased out Sunday afternoon lying on the sofa. No, I think you make a great point. And even when it comes to, like we mentioned, like practical styling of how you would wear it. So like, say there's these couple of pieces that we all like, that's that piece in your wardrobe where you you have to build everything around that with another brand or whatever to make yeah. that piece look amazing. And then, or it's that piece that you just sort of like throw on because of whatever. Like none of those pieces in there are your, oh my God, this is my new favourite blazer. This is my new favourite X, Y, and Z. There's nothing in there that's like that, unfortunately. Nicole, do you think that the, that the actual show itself was really dark and you couldn't see the clothes? You, you said it earlier on that it, 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 was, it was really hard just to, to actually see the clothes. Do you think they did that on purpose? <laughs> well, you mean it, that they did it hard to watch they, they, they didn't want you to see the clothes. I mean, they were trying to make a statement piece of the show. I think, you know, they, you know, they, for me, I, I, I literally had to brighten the screen so much to actually try and look at what was being worn. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that, I mean, it definitely took me a few times to look at it. And I think as well, what Vincenzo was saying about um, life not being one of everything and how it becomes very obvious when brands start taking boxes. Yeah, um, so. That definitely works in the way of um, diversity. It it clearly here is also working in the way of sustainability because one of their, I guess one of their plugs for the collection is that it's made of a material called Alcantara. And actually, um, yeah. I remember working with this on my BA. It's like a suede alternative. It's actually pretty convincing. Um, And I actually went and looked into the sustainability credentials on this. They're apparently a net zero emissions company, which is good. Um, But I guess what sort of rubs me the wrong way about it is that at the end of the day, it's a, you know, it's a poly polyester polyurethane blend, presumably neither material are recycled. And, um, because it's now a mixed fiber textile, we have absolutely no way of recycling it after its end of life. So we actually, even even in Europe, we actually don't have the infrastructure or technology to separate mixed fibers to be able to recycle yeah. them. Really not even somewhere like Germany where the recycling infrastructure is perhaps one of the most sophisticated there is. So as much as it sort of seems like kind of a better material because it takes this box or that box, at the end of the day, it's just gonna behave like any other piece of garbage this industry creates really you just um, said it. it's ticking boxes yeah it's ticking ticking boxes but they're the wrong boxes you know you know this whole the, the future is so as we all know you know with the the, the bethany's of this world and all of the all, all of these other great amazing up-and-coming designers that are all sustainably conscious in the sense that what they do is using recycled fabrics and, and taking it forward 
for the planet in the sense that we know what fa- how much fashion kills this planet, you know, uh, and you'd think now, especially, uh, you know, they, they, they've had plenty of time to actually move forward and then no mm. one, this show's not moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually really sad to see a brand, I wouldn't even call it failing because that would imply that they've tried. But it's, it's, really, <laughs> it's, it's really sad after everything. Oh, my new favourite person, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you know, they, you know, I, I hate, you know, they always get me to do these panels and I really, you know, I, I, I don't come on here just to be bitchy, I come on here to tell my opinion and some people think, oh, well, what do you know? I know quite a lot because I've been around for quite some time. And, you know, for me, you know, I'm not on it just to to rip it to shreds because if there were some amazing bits in this show, I would say it. I like the jewellery. It was nothing new. It was nothing new, but I kind of liked it because I thought it was kind of like, you know, quite quite hoey in a a way, you know. It had that hoe factor, which, you know, that 80s hoe factor, again, the 90s, the names that the spelling in Diamante, all of that stuff been done to death, but you know what? It's good to reference the past, but I don't think they were referencing the past. I think they were referencing last year and the year before. That's not the past. Do you yeah. get what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I also think that you're being way too nice. I think you're being way too nice. I think that we've very, very clearly, objectively tried to consider it in a vacuum on its own and it, it uh, I nothing is coming up for me at all on this. I, I think it's such a shame. I think it's such a shame because I think, especially at the moment during the pandemic, I think for me, like I don't know if you both agree, but I actually feel like the catwalk shots at the end. This is so much cleaner than the yeah. than the, the video. The video is a waste of time. This makes the clothes look so much better. And I think at this point in in the pandemic, I think. What I feel it can do for brands is it can it, it polarizes you, but it, it means for the better. So what I mean by that is that I think you can be really, really creative and almost do a mini film uh, and nail it out of the park. And, you know, like where the clothes aren't necessarily the, the showcase, but you can do some beautiful fashion film. Um, the clothes obviously still have to be good, but the focus doesn't have to be there. And you can do these amazing creative things. Or you can go completely plain, do no show and only do catwalk images and let your clothes talk for themselves. Well, um, I, I agree with you totally. I think the catwalk, the actual skills of the show, of the clothes themselves, totally outshine, outshine the show. Yeah. You know, the whole the show for me as a, as a, is the reason why I don't do drugs anymore. It was really, you know, it was like, oh my God, I'm never doing that again. Yeah, that was yeah. the feeling it was for me. At the end, it was like, oh, my God, waking up and thinking, what did I do last? I'm never doing that again. And that's what that show left me like. And yeah. But then to look at the pieces individually uh, in static, it, yeah. it's a totally different show. Uh, I, I mean, it's still very thrown, everything's thrown in there. But it, it for me, that sells it far greater than that awful, awful, awful video. Yeah, I, I completely I've agree. I've said it three times now, awful, awful, awful <laughs> No, I agree. I agree. No, just even that dress before, just the the top just doesn't even fit her. Just kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing as well, is that like, if you're going to be inclusive of everyone and plus size modeling and anything in between, whatever it is on the spectrum, everyone, like, fit still exists, right? Things, have to, things still well, have to get you know, people correctly. You're going to use a bigger girl or the bigger breasted girl, make sure they look incredible. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We celebrate their body. Don't fucking like make it look like it. You know, oh, she's too big for that dress. No, yeah, make that dress look like it fits her, and that's how it should be worn. Yeah, so, I mean, like ta- tailoring is a concept, and its whole is it's individual. It's for you. So if you stick by that and use any model, then if you're making clothes for them, it should look great on them, right? You don't uh-huh. even so it shouldn't. It shouldn't even the size of a model shouldn't even be a consideration if you were to tailor things right. And I think it's important to show that on the runway. Well, um, I think it's really important that, you know, if, if we're conscious of it, how conscious must she have been feeling wearing that? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Yeah. You know, and, and I kind of think that's not, that's not fashion. That's yeah. not, it's also not I fair. It's really wrong. That's not you're, you're pre- yeah, you're pretending at that point, right? Like you're pretending yeah. that this is inclusive when that's clearly, clearly not. 
Yeah. Let me get, let me get down this catwalk and let me get out of this trip. As, yeah, as horrible as it is, is to say, especially with the diversity of just the planet, it, it, it is effort to include everyone, but you need to you need to put that effort in. And this just clearly shows that effort wasn't put in. So it's like, if you're going to pretend to be exclusive, at least pretend to put the effort in. Show it somewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah, make it look effortless. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's it. it, it yeah, it's, it's insane. It's insane. So, Nicole, if I was to say to you, right, yeah, right, if I was to say to you, point out of 10. Point out of 10. Unforgivable. <laughs> this is going to be brutal, isn't it? So that's, that, that's, that's two below zero, right? It's a little below zero. It's yeah. so funny. My, my flatmates are going to freak because last night I was looking through this and I was just praying and hoping that I wasn't the only one feeling this way because I just wanted <laughs> I think this is the reason why Karen Bins didn't come because she just didn't want to say <laughs> she it. Li- she <laughs> likes the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? She didn't want to mention it. She said, I've known Karen a very long time. And it's like the traffic's a good way to get out of it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because I, I could have used that one, really. <laughs> well, actually, I do think it is really important as much as we kind of have crucified the show I do think it's really important to do so because fashion um, isn't it's not something that will go away it's not something that can go away because people will always need to clothe themselves at the end of the day mm-hmm. whether it's, you know a runway kind of fantasy about something more than streetwear or mm-hmm. new- What's on the screen right now? That that guy, half naked guy with like the leather trousers, and then the two girls looking beside him. It's just like, come on! What are we mm. seriously? What's going on? You know? Yeah, I have I have zero understanding. What's yeah, in the video when they go from, you know? Okay, so let's take Tony's drug reference. Like, you can still make a clear line of your experience of that drugs on those nights, and you can tell a story, right? Like, where's the story in this? At what That's point? The, at what out, point yeah. when you're in the K hole, do you walk through a waterfall in your bra? Or sure, what does that really even rep- what does that represent? I don't. Yeah, the uh, being at a really bad weird. piss club on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, like you it's know, just... streams of pleasure in King's Cross. It's called. Cool, it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, it's very weird. I I can't I can't pinpoint it, and I, I would really I'd actually love to hear the creative directing team or whoever it was who did the storyboard essentially explain it because I don't think I'd understand anyone explaining it because I can't I'm trying to make up stories in my head about to get it all to tie together and all to fit and I don't think there's any story that anyone could tell me where I'd be like oh yeah this now makes total well, sense and I like appreciate they, it's, it it's like they had a script and they didn't put number the pages and they dropped it on the tube yeah. it's like they, they had eight scripts put it back together yeah. And it in. yeah yeah and it's like there you go yeah. that's it yeah it, oh, yeah that's how it's meant to be yeah. yeah, I feel like it's like they've they think they've been set on like seven or eight amazing ideas for a couple of years, and they're like, right, we're going to wow everyone, we're going to do it in this show. Money. Yeah, it's and it's just like, money. No. let's do it, let's do literally. it all. Yeah, literally, yeah. yeah. Like, it's a shame. Everyone's at home, let's make a stand. Mm-mm, it's not a stand. It's for me, it's a massive fall. Yeah. Um, I kind of think you know, there's not much else we can say on the matter. No. I'm struggling to find more insults. I mean, I can get really offensive <laughs> if we want me to, but... No, yeah, I, think we, I don't think we wrap this up, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so God can't destroy streetwear, but we certainly did. <laughs> um, I just thank, thank you both for coming along today. So Nicole, thank you. And thank you, Vincenzo. Uh, keep DJing and keep do, looking beautiful, Nicole. Um, I'm going to wrap it up with, with one of the lovely show studio outros that they always give me. Amazing. Thank you, all the panellists, and thank you all for watching. For the extensive Fashion Week coverage, be sure to visit showstudio.com. And if you're watching by Show Studio's YouTube channel, be sure to like and comment and subscribe below. And we will see you next time. I'll be back next season. I always am. And until then... <laughs> God bless.